Welcome Hornets, uh, and thank you for joining me today. I am going over part two. Uh, this is from assignment number one, uh, found on page 287, and I'm going to be going over numbers 39, 41, 51, 53, and 55, and then I'm going to be taking a look at the slope field theory, which is numbers 43 and 44 from this same page. So let's go ahead and start with number 39. And what they're asking you to try to do is work backward in order to try to find a particular solution. So if I already know a bit of facts, for example, I know that the second derivative of x is going to be x to the minus 3 halves power. I am also told that f prime of 4 equals 2, and I am given that uh, f of 0 is 0. So we're going to start right here that says that the second derivative, so I'm just going to work with dy equals x minus 3 halves dx, and I'm going to then integrate both sides. Make sure I take it one step at a time. So I have the d, dy uh, integration of dy and the integration of x to the minus 3 halves dx. I end up getting y equals. This will end up giving me a negative 2x to the minus 1 half power plus c. And this is now f prime of x. Now, in order for us to find the particular solution to this, we actually have to have a known value. And that's where f prime of 4 equaling 2 comes in. If I know that this is 2, then by plugging in 4, I should be able to get my answer. And my goal is to solve for c here. So I have 2 equals negative 2 divided by 2 plus c is 3 equaling c. You'll notice that this now gives me this answer. f prime of x is now negative 2x to the minus 1 half power plus 3. And this is now what I'm going to integrate. So dy equals negative 2x to the minus 1 half power plus 3 dx. Integrating, integrating. Once again, you can separate it if you prefer. It's up to you how you want to. And I now get my y equaling. Now remember, I'm about to add... And when I add, I'm dividing by 1 half, which is going to give me minus 4x to the 1 half power plus 3x plus c. And I'm told that f of 0 is 0. So if I plug in a 0, I get 0. Well, that means that the equation for this is y equals negative 4x to the 1 half power plus 3x. This is now the general solution that we're working with. Now, it's at this point that I recommend that you take a moment and check. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find my first derivative, y prime. y prime is negative 2x to the minus 1 half plus 3. Then, taking my second derivative, I end up getting, uh, let's see, bring this down, negative 1, positive 1x to the minus 3 halves power, and that's what I started off with. All right, so I now have my correct answer. This is the particular solution, and I can move on to number 41. Number 41 follows in the exact same pattern, except now they're telling you that f double prime of x is going to be e to the x, and we are given that f prime of 0 is 2, and f of 0 is 5. So we're going to start off by doing our dy equals e to the x dx. The integration of dy equals the integration of e to the x dx. And according to our rules, we get y equals e to the x plus c. We're now going to say that 2 equals e to the 0 power plus c. And be careful, e to the 0 power is really 1. And therefore, 1 equals c. We're now going to rewrite this so that we have y equals e to the c uh, e to the x plus 1. And this is now going to be my y prime, or f prime, 
in this case. So if f prime of x is equal to e to the x plus 1, my dy is equal to e to the x plus 1 dx. Integrating both sides, the integration of dy, the integration of e to the x plus 1 dx. Continuing gives me y equals e to the x plus x plus c. And according to my information, I have f of 0 is equal to 5. So 5 equals e to the 0 plus 0 plus c. And 4 must equal c. That means that f of x is e to the x plus x plus 4. And once again, a quick differentiation will tell me whether I'm right. We'll get e to the x plus 1, and then we'll get e to the x. Sounds good. The next problem that we're going to be taking a look at is number 51. And this is where we start to get into word problems. Now, remember, half of your AP test is going to be involving word problems, so you have to work through them. You have to try your best to make it um, doable and so, they get, so that you kind of get used to it. So this is talking about a tree. An evergreen nursery usually sells a certain type of shrub after six years of growth and shaping. The growth rate during those six years is approximately dh dt is equal to 1.5 t plus 5 where t is the number in years and h is the height in centimeters. The seedlings are 12 centimeters tall when planted. So we have our, um, let's do growth g of 0 equals, and we're looking at 12 centimeters. Make sure that our units are the same. Um, h is in centimeters, so we should be good. We're now going to write it as dh equals 1.5t plus 5dt integrate dh equals the integration of 1.5t plus 5dt. This gives me h. The power is going up by 2, so I have, uh, this is really 3 halves, so I'm going to get 3 fourths t squared, and then I have plus 5t plus c, and we know that our growth at uh, 0 is 12, so the height is 12, 3 fourths times 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus c, 12 centimeters equals c. I'm now going to write this as my h of x, or h of t, is now 3 fourths t squared plus 5t plus 12. And this is my answer. The height uh, can now be found. And this is my height um, after t years. How tall are the trubs, uh, shrubs when they are sold? And they're sold after six years. So we're looking at h of 6. And that's going to be 3 times 4 times 36 plus 5 times 6 plus 12. These are going to reduce. So I'm looking at 27 plus 30 plus 12. That's 57, 69 inches when sold. And there we go. And that's uh, our number 51. Now, 53 is now talking about the falling object problem again. And it's going to be pretty straightforward based upon what we've already seen. So we're working with our acceleration, A of t, is negative 32 feet per second squared. Um, this is due to gravity, and they're telling us that we have no wind resistance. So in 53, a ball is thrown vertically up word, uh, from a height of 6 feet. Uh, with an initial velocity, so we now know our v naught is going to be um, 60 feet per second. 
And remember, they've given us our, our height and our position, S of uh, zero. And S of zero is six feet uh, from the height, six feet. Notice we can see if we take our derivative, we get feet per second and then feet per second squared. We're going to work with our acceleration so that we find velocity. Velocity is the integration of acceleration dt. So our velocity is going to equal the integration of negative 32 dt. And that gives us v of t is equal to negative 32 t plus c. But they've told us that at zero, we have 60 feet per second. And therefore, negative 32 times 0 plus c. And we now know that 60 equals c. Our velocity is therefore negative 32t plus 60. And this allows us to find our position. S of t is the integration of velocity. And so we're going to integrate negative 32t plus 60 dt. This is going to give me negative 16t squared plus 60t plus our constant. And we are given that our height was 6 feet. And so if I plug in 0, we can clearly see that this constant is 6. And so S of t is negative 16t squared plus 60t plus 6. And this is our solution. Now, 55 is doing the same basic concept. And I'm going to go ahead and let you take a look at that. All righty. Please beware, in part three, I'm going to be taking a look at working with the slope field uh, that we have on numbers 43 and 44. Thank you very much, and I hope this is helpful. Please remember to click like if you have found this useful to you. Thank you very much, and please be well. Take care, Hornets. Be safe and be kind. And remember, it's easy to be mean. So let's be kind to each other. Let's be nice. Thank you very much. Goodbye.